Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. This whole video is about jet streams. When we get a very, very strong ridge that extends to the far north, it can bring very, very warm, moist air up into the Arctic, to the North Pole in the middle of, of uh, winter. It can bring very, very warm air, very, very far south to touch the borders of Antarctica. So I'm gonna talk all about the properties of the jet stream. Okay, so on Earth Null School, if you click on Earth and you look at the winds at 250 millibar uh, or hexapascals, one millibar equals one hexapascal, then you can see uh, what we have here. This, so this is in the Arctic. Okay, so there's actually warm, humid air going right up there into the far Arctic, which I showed uh, last video and in the previous videos before that. And this is in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, so look at these, look at these undulations in the jet stream. It breaks up into different components, parts of it spin off, etc. Um, and of course, ridges and troughs are upside down in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, if I go to this view here, okay, P, and I click on this to get rid of the menu, this is a, an overall view of the planet. If I just uh, move this a little bit, okay, you can see where the land masses are here. So we're up here, North America, and so on, okay? And I'll just let it restart. Okay, so what we can see here is you can see, uh, first of all, you'll notice all of the ridges and ridges and troughs and the jet stream breaking up and so on and the whirls and in the southern hemisphere things are very distorted you can see um, this is the equator here you can see things going from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere and vice versa at various locations okay so how do we how do we make sense of this okay so let's have a look here this is the best uh, um, article that explains the things very well um, it was posted in May, on May 22nd, 2013 by John Mason on this Skeptical Science site, which is a site by climate scientists, okay? Um, and it mentions, um, like you see jet streams mentioned more and more in the news, but it doesn't really tell you too much about them. So this is really a, a detailed primer on things. So let's start with the troposphere which is where the weather occurs okay so here's here's where we are okay this is where we, this is the surface of the earth here okay the troposphere is the lower part of the atmosphere it's where the weather occurs the average height of the troposphere is 11 kilometers high it this division is defined the temperature at the surface is high and it drops as you go up in elevation and then it stabilizes. And at this part where it starts to stabilize, that's called the tropopause. And then the temperature increases there as you go up into the stratosphere. This is where the ozone layer is. The reason why the temperature increases is these gases in this region, like ozone, absorb energy from the sun, absorb the UV, and that heats, they heat up. So the temperature rises here. And then where the temperature uh, flattens off again with altitude, it's the stratopause, which is the top of the stratosphere. Then we have the mesosphere, the temperature drops again. And then where it kind of kinks and stabilizes or, or changes, we have the thermosphere. So those are the main levels of the atmosphere. Okay, so that's a key factor. Now, the thing is, is that there's also different areas um, in, the, in the troposphere. So we talk about the, there's a free atmosphere and there's a planetary boundary layer. The boundary layer is from the surface to about a kilometer above. Actually, it's about 1.5 kilometers is what normally is, uh, that's the normal, uh, so from the surface to 1.5 kilometers, that's normally um, considered boundary layer, planetary boundary layer region. 
And that means that the air movements and temperatures are influenced not just by major weather patterns, but by the surface. So frictional drag, as wind crosses land area, there's frictional drag. There is less when you cross water. There's eddies, there's veering and lifting due to hills and headlands. There's convection. Um, the, the, the sun warms the surface, there's convection. Okay, um, so if air is moving horizontally and hits topography, hits a mountain, it'll be a vertical component upwards into the atmosphere. So generally things like that are happening. It's more complex motion near the surface in this boundary layer. You get above about 1.5 kilometers and it's called the free atmosphere. Um, and up there it's mostly pressure differences and the rotation of the earth creating the Coriolis force that determine the motion. Okay, two factors, the gradients that exist between centers of high and low pressure and the Coriolis force, which is the Earth's rotation. Okay, so here's typical levels. The pressure at the surface is 1013 hexapascals. at zero meters high, zero feet high. When you talk about the 850 millibar level, that's about 1.5 kilometers or 4780 feet roughly. 700 millibar, that's 700 hexapascals or millibar, that's about three kilometers up. 500, it's about just over, it's about 5.5 kilometers up. And when we get up to 200 millibar, we're talking about where the jet streams are. On, on Earth Null School, it's 250. Between these two layers, it's, it's, it's about 10 or 11 kilometers which is where the uh, tropopause is, okay? That's about uh, between 30 and 38,000 feet, okay? As weather systems move through, that changes the pressure at heights, for example. Um, if you have a low pressure area, an Atlantic low pressure system that moves through and then it's replaced by a large high pressure system, the low pressure area might be 970, the high pressure 1030, the difference is about 60. Remember about, 10, about 1000 is uh, surface pressure, 1013, 1000 is about, about a couple meters above the surface. Okay, so let's talk about the polar front and the jet streams. Okay, um, the jet streams are high altitude winds, they can exceed 200 miles an hour, they, they're just below the tropopause. Now let's have a look. Okay, now I showed you the layer, the troposphere is about 11 kilometers high. At the equator, that's the average. At the equator, the air is warmer, so it rises up high. So the tropopause is higher. It's about 17 kilometers high. Where the air is very cold, it's compressed. It doesn't expand so much. Maybe about seven kilometers high in the Arctic. Now we have these patterns of air, these rotations. Air rises at the equator, spreads towards the poles, and descends about 30 degrees in this gear called the Hadley cell. This, the ferrule cell is geared, right? The Hadley's going down, the ferrule has to go down, so it's a geared, and it, so the air will rise here, and then the air, the, the polar cell comes like this. Now what you can see is where the air is rising, you get clouds formed, you get storms and things. Where the air is descending, the air is dry up high. When it descends down, it's dry. So this is where the deserts are of the planet, mostly around this region. Okay, now the jets here, this is a polar jet here, and this is a subtropical jet. It's where these gears mesh at both places. Okay, that's very crucial. Now, if you look um, now th there's waves in these jet streams. Okay, so these waves here, um, this is an example. Um, okay, this is a 300 hexapascal pressure level. So Earth Null School, we, we're looking at 250. Okay, so what we see is we see this type of pattern. So this would be, this would be uh, warm air comes up. This is a ridge here. And there's another... Um, this is a, a, a ridge up here. Okay, so this is a ridge, uh, sorry. This is a ridge here, the jet stream comes here, now it splits. So we get a ridge here and a, and a sub ridge here, if you like. And then we get the trough here. So we can get cold air coming down from the Arctic here, we get warm air coming up. Th these are known as the long waves. 
the uh, larger magnitude waves and then the shorter waves are known here. I don't like that terminology because long and short waves should refer to the wavelength, not the amplitude, but that's uh, generally what we see here. Okay, um, now this is what we, when we have the jet streams moving mostly from the west to the east, um, we would say that that's mostly zonal flow. Meridional flow is when the wave becomes amplified in the north-south direction. Okay, the magnitude of the wave, the, 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 the crests are higher up, the troughs are deeper down. So this is very warm air up here, very cold air here, very cold air here. Okay, and these waves traverse the planet. Okay, they move, the whole thing moves. But when they're very sharp, sharp and very meridional, they get stuck into place and we get persistent patterns. Okay, so if we go back down here, so here's, here's a cartoon. So what we have is we have a ridge here, very warm, very, very warm, dry air. And we have a trough here, very cold polar air. Now use your right hand. It's a right hand rule. Okay, so move your fingers in the direction of the motion and your thumb points into the into the uh, board so that so so we're up high and the air is descending down so it's very very dry very very warm here you have uh you know if your fingers are moving for your right hand are moving in this direction it's coming out of the board so it's bringing air up right so there's rising air so this will be this will be uh, stormy here and low pressure at the surface in this trough. And again, here we have this, this the right hand rule, it's pointing down and we get the ridge, okay? Um, now there's something called vorticity. So positive uh, vorticity, advection, is, when the, in, is in this case here, okay? So, um, and uh, negative vorticity is here. So when your finger is pointing up, um, away from the board, away from the surface, that's positive vorticity, okay? And so the wave is moving here, and it brings positive vorticity in this region. And here we've got negative vorticity is when your thumb is pointing into the board, and that brings cold, that, that, the cold air from above warms up as it descends and it's dry, so that's how you define those regions. Okay, so the jet stream um, can, can create these dynamic lows and, and highs. Okay, now wind shear is another very important factor. Wind shear is when the winds are changing um, with height, whether they're changing, they're changing in speed as you, with height or they're changing in direction or both. So you can have directional shear and you can just have uh, shear involving changes in wind speed. There's all, always shear as you go upwards in the atmosphere you know, it might not be windy at ground level, but it's very windy at the top of the mountain that you climb. Okay, um, if there's shear, it causes tilt in the clouds, which is very important um, because here you have a storm here where the rain is here and there's tilt because what, if there's no tilt, then the uh, updrafts and downdrafts are going to occur in the same place and they're gonna quench out the storm. When the storm is tilted, the downdrafts and the updrafts are in different locations and the storm can actually strengthen. Now we can talk about jet streaks, okay? This is when there's jet streaks, areas of very, very high flow here. Okay, so this is a jet streak here and this would be the, the, the wind direction is this way, of course. So this is the entrance to the jet streak. This is the exit. And in different locations, depending on left and right, right and left, you, you can get positive vorticity, negative vorticity, and that you can figure out where the extreme weather is, is likely to be. Um, now, there's also something called the, we have these indices. So the Arctic Oscillation here is positive. And when it's negative, we have very, very wavy jet streams. There's also something called the NAO here, very strong low, very strong high. Um, and then a negative NAO is, is uh, weaker values, and that also inf influences the weather, okay? Um, we can talk about dipoles and things like that. Anyway, there's lots of great information in this 
um, in this uh, article. So please have a look at, at it yourself and, and to figure to get